Hi, I'm Senator Campanin. Welcome to my legislative report. We've been working uh, on legislation that would tend to set the standard for wellness in the uh, state of New York so we could have some type of agreement on uh, what type of preventive steps people ought to do, what type of screening people ought to do, what type of lifestyles people ought to do. One of the people we've been working with has been Dr. Jennifer Lindstrom, who's double certified in boards in internal medicine, pediatrics, and also works with on clinical nutrition problems for individuals. And she, through the American College of Surgeons, has been talking with us. Uh, we're trying to come up with a draft of some legislation. But the, the basic thing is everybody knows good health, but we don't have really a set of protocols to follow good health. And I actually wanted to go a little bit uh, deeper on that today. I was trying to say, what can we do to tell folks uh, about steps they should take for good health? And then I thought, well, wait a minute. Let's, let's divide the segment down. Let's deal with just women. Women are supposed to be the ones who are the caregivers. They take care of themselves. But then I've often saw in the literature um, that they take care of themselves because of reproductive medicine. Mm -hmm. um, they're very good, uh, and they tend to think, well, I've seen the doctor. Um, I, I don't need to do anything else. But the rising numbers of women with heart disease, the rising number of women with diabetes, um, show that they have other concerns outside of gynecology. So I thought, let me hit you up. You're, you're really a, a, a triple threat here. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe you could say, you know, what would be the steps a woman should be taking in regard to being proactive about her health and the medical profession? Yep. So it's very important that women do have their regular GYN care. Cancer screening is very important, but it's not just um, reproductive cancers like breast cancer and cervical cancer that women need to be concerned about. Um, other cancer screenings, maybe colonoscopies or even skin cancer screenings. But getting back to heart disease, heart disease being the number one killer of women in the United States, there's other numbers that count. So what is your blood pressure? What is your cholesterol? Are you physically active? So physical activity is important to maintain general health. A lot of times we lump it into, I'm trying to lose weight, I want to exercise, but regardless of what your weight is, it's important to be physically active to maintain good cardiovascular health. Women typically see their GYN doctor once a year. Now, if you have a, a slightly elevated blood pressure or an abnormal cholesterol, those things probably warrant follow-up more than once a year, and that's where your general practitioner or your primary care doctor can really play a key role. Now, I don't know this, but when you go to the GYN, do you get your blood tests done and all of that so there's a range of the chemistry that's looked at so that if your cholesterol is out of whack or there's something else, salts or whatever, you know, somebody's going to be on the alert? Yeah, so some how GYN doctors practice is different. There are some GYN doctors who they routinely do your blood pressure when you come in for the office visit. They take your height and your weight so they can assess you for your body mass index to see if you're in the healthy, overweight, or obese range. Um, some GYN doctors will order cholesterol panels or blood sugar panels to look for diabetes or prediabetes, but it's not standard, I would say. So um, if they find an issue like that, GYN doctors sometimes will refer you back to your primary care doctor, assuming, of course, that you have one. And we know that access to primary care doctors is becoming a bigger issue here in the United States. Well, let's, let's just talk about that. Um, somebody living in the suburbs, should they be having a primary care doctor? They, they haven't had anything particularly bad. They've had uh, some, you know, they've got their flu shot, but they haven't had anything bad. Should they be taking steps, to uh, preventive steps? Absolutely. Everybody should be taking preventive steps. I mean, that's the whole point, is not to develop disease. We're not really good at that right now in the United States. We do a lot of sick care. Um, but, you know, you're not going to know what your blood pressure is. You can't feel your blood pressure. So you need to have that measured. Um, it's important to get guidance from a medical professional um, in primary care about what steps you can take additionally. Like I said, exercise is really important. It's hard to find time, but there's small things people can do to build exercise into their day. So taking steps, taking stairs, um, or longer um, periods of exercise during the week, like if people play on a soccer team or something like that, that's great. You don't have to exercise every day, but you want to get in enough exercise on a weekly basis to improve your cardiovascular risk. Years ago, people used to say, get a checkup once a year. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of fallen by the wayside. Yeah. Uh, we don't necessarily need a checkup, but you need to have a regular physician. And, and people don't tend to do that. Yeah. 
Um, how often you need to see the physician depends on your particular medical problems. Some medical problems like diabetes, for instance, um, people need to be seen at least twice a year, if not every three months, depending on how well controlled they are with their diabetes. There's blood work that needs to be assessed, urine tests, they need eye exams. So it depends on your medical problem as to how frequently you need to see a regular physician. In terms of regular yearly physicals, if you're completely healthy, you have no high blood pressure, cholesterol problems, you're active, you're at a healthy body weight range, then the recommendations are you don't necessarily need to go every year, but maybe every other year is sufficient. But you know, if a doctor is giving you a prescription, you probably need to see them once a year. You know, you, your needs may change for your prescriptions, even if it's for something as simple as allergies. My contention would be some point you need a baseline. Yes, At correct. some point you need to know Absolutely. what your bloods are to see if uh, you have an uh, inclination to diabetes or anything like that, or if you develop it. I have a friend who's, whose son who's been totally active, totally healthy, almost a vegetarian, all out of nowhere gets a diagnosis of diabetes. Yeah. But was there a baseline for them to evaluate? And yep. that, that's the, uh, the difficulty I think people have. Of, well, I'd like to see the doctor. Why? Uh, what's wrong? Nothing. Right. And, and you go, well, what would you like to do? I'd like to establish a relationship with you to be my primary care physician so that, you know, I have some type of uh, interaction. Yep. Yep. But also to assess other behaviors. Um, are you smoking? clearly a humongous risk factor. Um, how much alcohol are you drinking? Um, again, sleeping habits. There's other things that go into a healthy lifestyle that may or may not be assessed at, say, a GYN visit, getting back to women's health. So I think it's important to have an overall checkup with a physician and to just make sure that you are being proactive and you know what steps to take. Sometimes it's not totally clear where you need to go, and it depends on your family history. You know, some people have a genetic history that puts them at high risk for diabetes and heart disease, and those are people you might monitor more frequently.